Hello everyone and welcome back to Not Another White Box. My name is Cameron and I'm here on this extremely windy day to bring you something a little bit different to the norm. If you've been watching my channel in the past, you'll know that besides caravans, I love classic cars, specifically my lovely Rover P6 V8. So I thought today I'd do something a little bit unusual and show you what it's like to tow with a classic car. So without further ado, let's take a look. Just before we hook up the caravan, we're going to just walk through a few things about towing with a classic car. Starting with having a quick look at the engine, because we should really check the oil and water at least before we set off. If you look after the car, it will certainly look after you. A big consideration is towing mirrors, which are a legal requirement for towing in the UK. And when you have a classic car, it can be quite difficult to find towing mirrors that fit. I ended up finding these rather nice chrome plated wing mirrors in the old sense of the word, but you will also find door mirrors and even roof mounted mirrors suitable for classic cars. Before we hitch up the caravan, I'm just going to talk for a moment about number plates. Now, of course, you need a number plate that matches the vehicle on the back of the caravan. And the law states that if you have a black and silver plate on the car, you are allowed to have a matching one on the caravan. Now, the law about black and silver plates sort of changes all the time. The, this particular Rover is pre-1971, so it would have had one anyway, so that's not a problem. Um, it was at one point the law that if the car is tax exempt, so that's 40 years or older, you can legally fit a black and silver plate, but I think they may have just reverted this fairly recently. Not sure, someone will pull me up on it in the comments for sure. But um, the point is you need a matching plate on the back of the caravan that matches the tow vehicle. That's the same whether it's a classic or a modern one. A big throwback that a lot of you might remember is a leaf sprung stabiliser bar. Now these were all the rage from sort of the 1960s right through to the 1990s when modern stabiliser hitches replaced the need for it. But to be honest, they're not quite as effective as a proper leaf sprung stabiliser bar because you've got just something that's physically bigger and more capable of stopping the caravan from swaying. So naturally, when towing with a classic car, it's a piece of equipment from the past which I still use and think it's a great investment for a caravan. It just simply fits in with the bracket like so. Then you tighten it up. This end fits on the A-frame of the caravan and then you clamp it down to pull the pads together. And those rubber pads are what stops the, the sway of the caravan. Now, the Rover's a very stable classic car. Um, but it's just great when a lorry's passing and you just get a little nudge of wind, the stabiliser bar just gets rid of that when I'm towing. So I generally favour using it. Um, it. They're not completely maintenance free. You have to check that the pads are working and that the adjustment is set up correctly. But I know quite a few people who've gone back to these with their modern setup and swear by them. So there's a lot to be said about them. And it's certainly not uh, a gimmick from the past which should easily be forgotten about. But it's just another thing that goes with towing with a classic car. Uh, I think stability is probably one of the main issues that you would face. Um, but something like this, just it just one less thing to worry about and just makes it that little bit easier. So with the lights checked and the caravan hooked up, it's time to head out onto the open road and show you what it's like towing with a classic car. So we're out today with my 1962 Sprite Musketeer Caravan and I think everyone who's watching this video will have heard of Sprite and they were among the best towing caravans back in the day and it's a very well balanced caravan, it tows rather effortlessly to be honest and it's no sweat for the Rover to pull it. I think it's, it's just a very easy caravan to tow, it's very easy to deal with and the car just really makes light work of it because this car can tow up to 1200 kilograms but the Sprite Musketeer is only 850 so it's well within its limits, it's a very nicely balanced caravan and I've just never had any problems when towing with it. It's rather effortless to keep up with the speed limit and I don't actually have to use the stabiliser with it because the caravan tows so well. You tend to find that 
things we kind of take for granted with modern cars, like the stopping distance and, uh, you know, things like that. You've just got to think a little bit more about it when you're towing with a classic. And it's not really a problem. The caravan I've made sure the brakes are absolutely up to scratch. Obviously, things like the road lights, um, always make sure that they're all working and everything. It's very much the same as, as if you were towing a modern caravan with a modern car. All those pre-checks, uh, pre-journey checks, all the checking the wheel nuts, checking the road lights, making sure that all the windows are shut and locked and everything like that, all still applies when towing with a classic. The only thing that I might do versus uh, a modern car is just always make sure that I check the oil and water levels of the car. Touch wood, real wood. The Rover doesn't cause me any problems really in that department. But people say, oh, didn't old cars overheat and break down? Well, yes, they did, but it goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you look after the car, the car will look after you. I've done thousands of miles all over Europe towing with this particular car and other classics and very very seldom have I had a problem or something unexpected where the cars let me down and you can generally find with a classic versus a modern car that there's always something you can do to tinker with it or just get it going to get you where you need to be a couple of years ago I had a head gasket blow on my old classic car while we were in Germany and we were able to just pull up at the side of the road let it cool down and uh, we were filling it up with water from the river just to keep us going and the car got us 20 or 30 miles to the campsite just doing that it took many hours we'll gloss over that the point is though it got us there likewise the last modern car that i had uh, was just a modern volkswagen had an electrical fault while we were in belgium and all the road lights stopped working nothing we could do about it and we just had to call for the breakdown, get the caravan taken to a campsite and the whole thing was an absolute, you know, it, it was a really frustrating debacle for one silly electrical fault. So that's something that makes me love classic cars even more is that if you're quite hands-on and willing to have a go, you can always get them going and fix them and do little bits to get you where you need to be. And yeah, the Rovers never let me down in that department. One of the things about towing with a classic car is you have to be very mechanically sympathetic to the car and the era it's from. This Rover's from 1969 and the speed limit at the time for towing a caravan in the UK was only 40 miles an hour. Of course, the Rover P6 has no problem keeping up with the new current speed limit for towing a caravan of 60 miles an hour, but it's worth noting that you need to really be thinking all the time to be easing off. A steady 50, 55 is much better for towing with a classic car. Of course, all the usual rules apply of making sure that the weights are correct and the caravan is um, well matched to the car. But you tend to find with a classic car, they're a bit more forgiving with things like nose weight limits and you know general things like that. I guess, a physical attribute of a good tow car is that it doesn't have a very long rear overhang past the axle because that just aids with stability. Um, obviously the P6 does but for some reason it doesn't seem to massively hinder it when it comes to towing. So for me I've just found out of many classic cars that I've towed with over the years I only've had things like um, Jaguar XJ6, uh, Triumph 2500 which was a really popular tow car back in the day even something like a Volvo 240 I've towed with um, very very typical of their era tow cars and perhaps one of my favorite ones was the Austin Maxi which was an absolute caravan staple back in the 1970s but I just find that the, the P6 is a lovely car overall and does actually tow very well especially the V8 it's not lacking any power at all obviously but before this I had the 2200 twin carb and that was the same, it, it towed effortlessly, it was a really 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 good car and they tend to hold the road quite well and like I mentioned earlier things like the disc brakes all round just, just help make it a more easy experience towing with one. So it's quite 
you know, it's quite easy and it's not very stressful. I've had it in classic cars where you're worried about them overheating, that they don't have enough power, things like that. And the camera's disappearing and doing its own thing. <laughs> Towing the Sprite Musketeer gives me no problems at all with the Rover. I don't actually have to use the stabilizer bar, which I showed you earlier. Um, the Musketeer is so well balanced and handles the road so beautifully. It has fully coil spring suspension um, with a trailing arm design, which is actually much more effective at handling the road than the modern rubber torsion suspension, which all new caravans use. That tends to make them very bouncy and quite jittery on the road. And it really blew my mind the first time I started towing classic caravans, just how well they hold the road and just take all the bumps and the potholes in their stride and i really do think it's time that current manufacturers looked at something alternative to the rubber torsion setup which although it's the industry standard it's done for reasons of it's just maintenance free virtually and it's cheaper to produce and less parts involved but really having towed classic caravans with the traditional coil spring and shock absorber setup it's absolutely cannot be beaten um, when it comes to stability and the way that it holds itself on the road and that's just something i love about towing classic caravans even behind a modern car it's immediately noticeable that it's a much better setup but you have to remember when these cars were new in the 70s the speed limit for towing a caravan was 40 miles an hour and it only went up to 50 miles an hour in the mid 1970s and as a result these cars weren't really meant to be thrashed at 60 so as a rule I like to just keep to a steady 50 55 it's much kinder on the car and the gearbox and just accept that towing with a classic car is very much part of the holiday it's very much part of the experience so just slow down and enjoy it. That's my advice really for towing with a classic car. In terms of fuel economy, this is a Rover V8. Let's just cut that there. Um, I don't think we need to discuss, or I need to even work out just how badly it does when towing a caravan. <laughs> if it's double figures, I'll take that. But um, in all seriousness, towing with a V8, it's a lovely smooth engine and it has bags of power and you put your foot down it will tow so that's my experience with this car generally I would say if you're looking to buy a classic car and you're planning on towing with it you need to make sure that the engines up to scratch you need to be checking especially silly things like the ignition system just make sure it's all up to scratch and I keep this very religiously serviced and keep on top of the maintenance aspect of it because that way I know I can depend on it when there's a caravan on the back. Um, we've talked about automatics versus manuals, of course, in the modern day, it makes no difference. But the general advice used to be, don't tow with an automatic. The reason is, is that pretty much every British car from the mid 60s onwards used the Borg Warner three-speed box. Now, it's in top gear at about 30 miles an hour. So can you imagine what the torque converter is having to do when there's a caravan involved. My experience is um, that advice does apply if the car has a smaller engine, sort of around 2000 cc or less. But above that, it's not a problem towing with an automatic at all. I don't actually have an oil cooler fitted on this. Um, it hasn't needed it, doesn't need it, but I did have the box rebuilt. Um, by Clive Annabel, who's one of the best, if not the best, Rover P6 specialist in the country. He did a really great job of rebuilding the box. And it's just one less thing for me to worry about now. I know it's been done, I know it's up to scratch. And touch wood, real wood, <laughs> it's not presented me with any problems when towing. And I've done quite a few thousand miles now with this car, with the caravan on the back. And it's absolutely fine. You tend to find that as you settle into life in the slow lane, um, you get a lot of admiration when you're towing with a classic car. Be prepared if you're going to stop somewhere, you're going to get tons of people want to take photos and ask questions. 
and I guess it's just part of the experience. It's fun, it's nice talking to people. When you're towing with a classic and you stop somewhere and everybody wants to take pictures of it and ask questions, to me that's part of it, that's part of the fun and I love that and I would never sort of pawn someone off and say, oh, I'm not talking to you, but if you're gonna tow with a classic, you need to expect that if you're gonna stop, you're gonna be quite inundated with questions. One thing to have an old car, it's another thing to have an old caravan. It's another thing entirely to tow the old caravan with the old car. But I love it. It's part of the journey. It's part of the experience. And that's something that, you know, is an unexpected side effect, really, of towing with a classic car. Overall, um, I think the advice is keep on top of the maintenance, look after the car and it will look after you and there's no issue with towing with a classic car. It's an enjoyable, fun experience and really just adds to the holiday in my opinion and I think there's no problem with it at all. So now I've shown you around and I've taken the caravan out and I've shown you what it's like. Let me know what you think in the comments below and thank you very much for watching. Be sure to follow Not Another White Box on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos coming very soon. Thanks for watching.